Hi there, Grade 11 and 12s. Welcome to Dandelion Delphi. Grade 11s, if your PAT requires you to include a database, this lesson would be for you. But definitely our Grade 12 PAT will include a database. And here are some steps to help you. By now, you should know what a parent and a child table is. And my first suggestion to you is to draw a table like this on paper and then ask your teacher what they think about it. Remember, you are allowed to ask questions. So think about a database relating to your scenario. Write the name of your parent table down here. That would be TBL, whatever it's called. And then pick a primary key for that table and list their fields. Usually the pad requires us to have five fields per table. Make sure that you include different data types. You will have a text data type and think about some numbers so that you can do processing. Then put the name down of your child table. Also pick a primary key for this table. It's important that both have a primary key. List the fields related to this table and then place the primary key field into your child table. Our aim is to have a one-to-many relationship and each child must have a parent. You are allowed to have more than two tables, but you need to have at least two to score the full marks and they must be normalized. Here's an example. Let's say I have hotels listed in my one table and the bookings for each hotel in another table. So I have one hotel has many bookings. In here, I could list a, the province the hotel is situated at, the cost per day, do they have room service, Wi-Fi, and a gym. In my bookings table, I have a primary key for the bookings, the number of adults that booked, the number of children, the date of arrival and departure, and then I have my hotel ID to link the booking to a specific hotel. I would not, for example, include a cost field here for the bookings because that can be calculated using the cost per day. So let's say the cost per day was for the number of adults and children get a certain discount on this cost per day. I would be able to calculate it. So it's important not to have calculated fields in my tables. Also see that I include in this table only fields that relates to the bookings and that in this table all the fields relate to a hotel. At this point, to ask your teacher if they approve and get some advice to make sure that you have a normalized database. Once you have your database approved on paper, you can go into Access, single click here on Blank Desk Desktop Database, and this will pop up. Here you will select the folder or browse to the folder where you want to save this database. I've just created a folder there called phase one, but important is to change this tab, type of database to the .mdb. The reason I do that is because the ACCDB requires other software to be installed on a computer to run with Delphi. So this just avoids having to install it on your teacher's computer or on whoever is moderating your computer. Here you want to give your database a name relating to your topic. So if I'm doing hotel bookings, I could call it hotel bookings. Oops. And once you've given the file a name, you click OK, and then you click Create. And now it's been created for you. Access saves automatically for you, and the file will be there in the folder where you selected it to be. To create the tables, I've created mine already, but you would click on create and then click on table. Then here on the left, you will single click on this icon there. It will then ask you to give the table a name. And for the pad, it's important to start your table name with PBL lowercase and then a descriptive name as to what it is storing. As you can see, I've called mine TBL Hotels and then TBL Booking. So I'm just going to put an X here. In here, you will list your fields and for each, you will select a data type. 
So we usually use short text, number, date, time, currency, possibly auto number and yes, no. If you select short text, you will see here at the bottom that the field size is 255, which is way too big. So we have to reduce the field size here. And the way to do that is to go into your view with your data and go and see what is the longest name that I will place in there. You can possibly add 10. So let's say this was 18 characters long. In here, I will change the name, the field size of the name, to maybe 28. You need to go into each of these fields and change the size. And if you then go back into your table view, you will have to save it. And then it will give you an error or a message box here to just say, are you sure you want to shorten it? Or some of those texts would be truncated if you made it too short. In my slides show, I had here cost per day. But you must remember that if you have spaces in a field name, you'll have to remember in SQL to put those squares brackets around it. So I've shortened it there to cost. But here I would rather select a currency instead of a number. Each table also needs a primary key. And to allocate your primary key, you will right click and then select primary key. And you'll see your key appearing there. TBL Hotels is my parent table and I'm going to use the hotel ID, which is the primary key in this table, to be the foreign key there in TBL Bookings. What is important that your, not only does the values that appear in this field need to be in TBL Bookings, but also that your format is exactly the same. So I'm going to change my hotel ID to a size of 6 because I've used 6 characters there for the primary key. And now, now I just have to save and there you can see that those are my values for my primary key, one for each hotel and each one of them unique in this table. You need to apply the same rules now for your next table, your child table. This is TBL bookings. I've picked an auto number here for the primary key and you would have to right click and select your primary key. For numbers, when I select a number like for adults, by default it's going to show you double. That is real values. So I'd rather use integer here as well as for the children. Make sure that you change that now to integer as well or any, any other value that should be an integer data type. And here I have my hotel ID, which is the foreign key in this case. And I'm going to change that also to six so that it matches the primary key in the hotels. In both your tables you could also then add a description here to explain what exactly it is that each field is doing. You need to have at least 10 records per table and you must make sure that your foreign key, in this case the hotel ID, has a value here as the primary key in this table. So make sure that you don't use one here that doesn't yet exist in your hotels. Once you know you have done everything I've explained up to now, you would right click and select close all. Now you want to link the two tables. So you want to go to database tools and when you click on relationship, this table here would pop up. You can now use your shift or your control key to select your two tables and click on add. If you can't see all the fields in your table, you can click and drag it here to make it bigger. I suggest you put your parent table on the left and then you put your child table there on the right. Now you will click on the primary key of the parent table, click and drag to the foreign key of the child table and let go and this will pop up. Important that you click on enforce referential integrity and then click on create. Your aim is to have a one-to-many relationship. So if this is what you see, you know you've done it correctly. If you have some errors, it might be because the field sizes of these two hotel IDs, or the primary key here and the foreign key there, maybe the field sizes are not the same, or the data types are not the same, or that you possibly have a hotel ID or a value in the foreign key 
that does not yet exist as a primary key in your parent table. In this case, you would have to close here, save it, and then go back in here and correct it as explained before. Setting up your database really helps you to plan the rest of your path because then you have a clear idea of what your program will be doing and what would be possible. Next, we will do the interface. Hope this helped you grade 11s and 12s. See you soon!